Hi, I'm Worm from Worm's Amazing Videos. Click that subscribe button down below and also smash that like button. Today, I'm going to be asking my granddad some questions. So, Grand Bob. Yes, Worm. Are you ready for some questions? I'm ready for questions. What was it like being a paratrooper? At times scary, at times very good, plenty comrades, good, good men, and you stood amongst men you could rely upon for your life. Could you explain what a paratrooper is, please? Well, he's a man that sort of jumps out of an aircraft with a parachute. That's the basic thing. But the, but the uh, more important aspect is that he, the paratrooper, has to be specially trained uh, for operations. How old, were, how old were you when you joined? When I joined the paras, I joined the paras, I would be, I think, uh, I think about 24. I had been in the military before I joined the Paras. Nice. What year did you join? The Paras, the, I joined the army in 1956 and I transferred to the Paras in 1960. Um, what tribes did you work with during the war? The you, tribes? You. Oh yes, I mean, I, 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 I uh, had friends who were not just comrades, they were friends, and they were the E-bands from North Borneo, used as trackers in the jungle because they knew how to look at the jungle in a way that the white man does not look at the jungle. What was your nickname? Oh, they called me Bwaya. The Evans called me Boyer because uh, it's crocodile, and and I thought, well, you know, <laughs> give me a oh, that's a good name that, you know, when you think of the, you know, the crocodile being a, especially a salt water crocodile, being a rather dangerous animal. But they told me that the reason they called me Boyer was because I would eat anything. <laughs> <laughs> Could you give us some of, uh, some examples of what you would eat? Well, I mean, rats, uh, dog meat, uh, snake, uh, uh, you know, and sort of de de delicacies of that type, which you find that you will eat if you are starving. If you're living in the jungle, right? Yeah. You're living in the jungle Malay. Mm. You would think it was. You would think it was. It was very thin and like. <laughs> yeah, it was very thin and. Yeah. Like, yeah. What was community relations in Northern Ireland? Community relations. That was uh, referring to the military. What was where certain men were selected by their colonel to move amongst the civilian population wearing plain clothes and helping those that you were working with, uh, uh, the civilians, um, helping them to uh, not hate each other. Did you have to arrest anybody? Did I? Oh, well, I have arrested people in my time, yeah. yeah. What was it like arresting them? Well, usually it's pretty dramatic because, you know, when when the military had to arrest people, they weren't trained as police. So um, uh, it was not as if they were handling people as a policeman would. Right. Uh, that's what I I'll put that down. <laughs> um, what wars were you in? What wars were you involved in? Well, uh, um, um, emergencies. Uh, well, starting Malaya, the Malaysian uh, uh, 
conflict. Um, many areas of the Middle East, you know, stretching on operations from actually most of North, North Africa, Libya, um, uh, the Persian Gulf, um, places like Yaz Island where one time we were parachuted in there, the ambient temperature was 61 degrees, which on um, uh, the Fahrenheit scale was 142. And, uh, you know, men, men there died just merely because they got heat stroke. Um, and heat stroke is where the um, temperature regulator in your brain goes kaput, it's finished. And that means you warm up to local temperature. Um, other places I have been operational was many times in Cyprus. Uh, and also uh, very many times in Northern Ireland. Uh, I have, uh, or did, you know, operationally speaking, uh, work in civilian clothes in Northern Ireland. And, um, uh, and, and in uniform. And where else? Berlin. Pardon? Berlin. Oh yes, Berlin, Berlin during the Cold War. And we knew that uh, um, if the Russians did the attack, they would gas us. And that was where one droplet of, uh, I forget the name of the stuff, but one droplet on the skin would uh, put you into a, a traumatic uh, convulsion and uh, would, would most probably result in your death, or well, almost certainly result in your death. So you therefore had to have certain quick drills to put on your complete um, anti-gas uh, clothing and to uh, put your respirator on. Uh, so, uh, you know, that was um, part of uh, living with the threat of Russia always about you. And as, as you know now, the Russians are proving to be, you know, an absolute barbarous um, people ruled by people who are, you know, I think maybe mentally affected is his name. And he is the, uh, he is the ruler of Russia, well, he's a despot. Means that you're not sort of, you know, if we talk about democracy, and uh, looking for, um, you know, a de de democratic election of officials uh, to rule the country, that is definitely not the case in Russia. <laughs> um, but um, I can't think of all the He could have been a friend of, uh, he, he lived in Berlin for four years, you know. No, I think Berlin was about uh, two years. Two, two years. years. Two years. But he, he had a friend who was an American. Guys, thank you for watching. Remember to click that subscribe button down below and also smash that like button hardcore. Peace.